sweating, just gonna get upset, all of a sudden your brain starts wondering all these different things, you have just discovered what we call testing anxiety. And so when we take our test on you first, you know, this is it, 35 questions. Those of you who have been struggling with this course, <laughs> with the content, you may experience this. Alright, so we're doing that again? Yeah. Okay, to me, math anxiety is the stress you face when you go into a math class or when you go to take a test and you just feel the dread fall over you. It's just a feeling of helplessness. I start thinking of the things that I should have studied more, um, if I'm prepared for it, if there's things that I haven't studied for that's going to be on it. Just general feelings of concern and like, oh my gosh, I can't do this, what am I doing with myself? I used to panic when I take a test, and that's because I wanted everything to be right, and I knew that everybody was waiting for the results, so that much pressure caused the attack. I thought I was a really good math student until I got to Calc 3 in college and that was kind of my ceiling and I realized all of a sudden that I had no clue what was going on and it's an overwhelming feeling uh, because you don't have any structures in your brain to rely on. You realize at that point that you've just been relying on memorization and when that doesn't work you have you have nothing to as, as like a plan B you got nothing. What's our upper bound? <laughs> Zero. What's our mean? <laughs> Point zero three, and our standard deviation. Point oh three seven. What well, was the first time in my math life, so to speak, that I had to learn how to ask good questions? Um, I'd never really been one to take advantage of teachers' tutorials or office hours, um, so that was when I really learned how important that is to kind of. You know, know what you don't know so that you can then go ask an expert about it. When I had a teacher that was really, really rough on me, um, the teacher made it known that he did not like anyone in the classroom. So when it was time to take a test or if he asked a question, I had this feeling that whatever I say is not going to be what he wants to hear. So that pressure caused me to kind of like not say much and I'll just more, I was more comfortable putting my work on paper instead of speaking. But I did notice it with, with him as an instructor. Quantitative, there are nine dolphins in this pod. Uh, they contain 45% of body mass each day. Uh, the sonar frequency most, most often used by dolphins is around 100 uh, kilohertz. Minimum. To me, math anxiety is just general feelings of stress regarding math, typically when you're taking a test or a quiz. I would say that math anxiety is when people have a fear or just feel very overwhelmed by something with math. Now sometimes that's the math classroom and sometimes that's the math itself, but I would say that math anxiety could um, manifest itself in either, in either situation. It's complicated because you think you understand the material, but when it comes time for an uh, exam or something, you find out that you don't. <laughs> I think there are a few reasons. I think the biggest reason is that when compared to other subjects, math is a much more you are right or you are wrong. And I think the lack of gray area for many people um, is the kind of catalyst of the nerves. Um, in other subject areas, often you can explain or elaborate um, points of view or argue different viewpoints, which you can't do in math. And again, I think that contributes to some of the math anxiety. I think that the anxiety associated with the math itself tends to come from being ill-prepared for the class that you're in, or not having strong enough foundation for the skills that you're doing, or um, we see it a lot when students go from one year of math to another, when uh, maybe they have been kind of passed along at some point in their student life, where maybe they haven't actually had mastery, but they've been able to get through enough to get to the next class. And if that happens year after year, you're all of a sudden sitting in a class that you are very not prepared prepared for. So I think that that's how it shows with the math itself. That's when people get scared because they they don't know what they're doing and they don't know what steps to take, that kind of thing. You know, I'm a math teacher, so I can see it from the students uh, when, when they have the anxiety of, I don't know how to do this, or me trying to teach something in a different way that gives me the anxiety of, uh, you know, taking the risk of, here's a new topic, 
uh, for you and I know how to explain it in a specific way, can I do it in a different way? And that, that different way gives me anxiety because I may be not explaining it correctly or maybe I, I messed something up there. Uh, I didn't have those little pieces that I was talking about. So I think math anxiety is something that everyone experiences depending on the situation. Um, I hadn't up until this year, but then I took a lovely little class called IB Math HL. And then I found out that I'm actually not good at math apparently. Because I went from like, oh, this is all easy to, oh no, I'm dying. So now it's more of a, oh yeah, this class is stressful, the rest of it's all fine. And negative numbers are anywhere from negative 199 to zero. Ooh. Okay, does that make sense? Math anxiety is a fear of the unknown for a student that's in a math class. Um, so it's, it's the feeling of stress you get when you get to a problem and these procedures that you've memorized aren't working, they're not coming to mind and you have no idea what to do. I experience math anxiety, honestly, like on the regular. Uh, math isn't a subject that I'm really good at. I'm more of an English type of person. I'm more of a person who would rather do essays than answer math equations. Uh, it's never really come easy to me, so going into math is honestly a struggle every day. It applies very directly to my profession. I think it's given me a better window into helping kids that don't understand. Now the problem is when teaching math, you know, you got 25, 30, 35 kids in a class. It's hard for us sometimes to figure out what kids have questions stored up here that they're just afraid to ask. If, you know, students and teachers coming together and teachers understanding, you know, some students aren't going to get this right away. They're going to need some scaffolding. Students understanding, it's okay if I'm wrong, you know, up front. My teacher's not going to throw fruit at me. I just need to be able to ask good questions. Um, so, so I think it's been able to, it's, it's helped me be able to like put myself in the perspective of a student that does feel that anxiety and be able to approach them better and you know kind of prod until I can get those questions out of them. Okay, I think you get point two one one. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah. Two, one, one. Yes, you do. Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, what's that number called? Oh, that's a P value. That's a P value. Right? So that means. To me, math anxiety is a daily occurrence. To a lot of people, math seems just pretty mysterious. Like I think back on my experience as a student all the way back to elementary school. Um, there were a lot of things that I did in math that I did well only because I mimicked exactly what the teacher did. And so I could you know, follow what the teacher told me to do. And I could do that over and over. And I could do it well enough to perform well on a test my heart starts beating really fast and I start sweating and I start thinking of all the possibilities um, that could happen, like me getting a bad grade and it impacting my quarter and then my final. I think about my AP stats exam, my throat starts closing up. Can't really breathe, it's happening right now. <laughs> um, it's just, it's something that I deal with every day, especially if there's a quiz or a test that I don't feel very prepared for. But the feeling is very stressful. You know, you feel kind of helpless. Uh, you look at a problem and all of a sudden your eyes get huge and you have no idea what's going on uh, and you don't even know what to ask and that feeling causes cause you to sweat and get hot and be stressed out especially if you're motivated by grades because the first thought you have is you know oh no this is going to be my first my first F my first D my first C whatever the case may be. Is this a standard deviation? It is. Yes. Then why is it PC equals that? Look right there on the board in green. Eventually I started to understand that I really didn't know what I was doing or why I was doing it. I was just a really good memorizer. And a lot of kids don't have that skill, nor should they, frankly. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to rely on memory just to get through a high school math course. So I think what causes the anxiety is relying on memory and formulas and procedures and mimicking. And then it gets to a point where that is not enough and that doesn't work and that doesn't get, you know, you can't get by just relying on that. And that's when math anxiety happens because you realize, man, I've been doing these things for years that, but I don't really know what I was doing or why I was doing it. And now I have no conceptual understanding in my brain to rely on to tackle this problem. So, you know, think, thinking back to algebra, you talk about a linear equation. When I learned it, I learned, okay, here's the formula for slope intercept form. Here's the formula for slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I had no idea what slope meant. Slope's actually really cool and it <laughs> connects all the way up to some really advanced calculus. 
Uh, but sometimes students haven't had the chance to have those conversations or experience that learning. And so they're just memorizing, okay, slopes this thing, I plug in these points, I get an answer. I know I can like maybe go up and over on a graph or something, but I don't necessarily know like what slope is or how it could apply to anything outside of this problem on this worksheet. For kids, at some point they reach a ceiling where just relying on that memory or those formulas is not enough. And that is what I think is the underlying cause of math anxiety. It's the feeling that, oh crap, I have no idea what I'm doing and I don't even know how to ask for help on it. I've experienced math anxiety every year. Wait, how long do you take math? Like forever? Yeah. Math anxiety to me is the sensation that causes you to lose all common sense. It's, it's making decisions. It's like a panic attack um, on an extreme. And then it's also like stage fright. Uh, it can last for a moment and disappear later. Okay, so where does the I think the difference between math and the other subject is math is just so numbers. It's numbers, it's abstract. Um, you have a lot of people who call themselves geniuses that's ready to pounce you, you know, like Sheldon effect, that's ready to pounce you. If you say one thing wrong, you're no longer smart enough. Um, I think with the other subjects, you can pretty much um, get your understanding just by dialogue. If you may not, if you're not able to put it on paper, you can talk about it and explain it and the person that you're talking to get the understanding. But with numbers, it's like facts, either it's right or it's wrong. And that's a lot of pressure. Getting teachers who teach me more visually and actually show me and explain it to me kind of over and over, like my current math teacher, helps me a lot to like, um, helps me a lot to learn better because then I'm like, if I see it, I can do it. But if I don't see it, if I'm just like listening to it, it's, it won't resonate with me. It also has to deal with how that teacher make that student feel. Um, because we all have our fear of things and sometimes in the presence of people um, that makes you feel comfortable and safe, you can get over it and be able to participate and trust the environment that you're in. I honestly believe that this is something that was, um, if a student had a panic attack, I think that it was caused by someone. Someone caused this person to feel like they weren't safe to share their knowledge, to speak, or to even perform. Um, of, of being ridiculed, this person could have been teased or yelled at or just look like, you know, you really don't know what you're doing. And some people are very sensitive. And I think most of us have that moment in time that when you have to perform in front of a lot of people or someone is gonna be watching what you're doing, like, I'm watching that type of sensation, it makes you kind of like freeze up a little bit. Um, so I just got really stressed with the amount of schoolwork that we got during math. And um, I just stopped wearing shoes just to you know, make myself feel grounded. It was kind of like an analogy. It's like years ago when I flew to Germany, I sat next to this guy who had fear of flying. And he was this big macho guy in a military uniform. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This man is freaking out next to me. And the airline attendant came to him and gave him some warm socks. And I tell my SAT students this all the time. She put some warm socks on his feet and she just told him to just rub his feet just back and forth on the carpet and it'll relax him. So he did it and I was shocked. This man flew all the way to Germany, you know, without freaking out beside me. So that's one technique that I learned, okay, how to calm down when you have a panic attack. So I think students need to look up ways on how can they overcome this feeling and I think they'll be okay. And don't focus so much on the grades again because you're putting pressure on yourself. You're looking at numbers that's measuring you, making you feel you're this or that, and you're making that, that other substance have power over you. So you have to take control, power over your learning, 
confidence in that it's okay to get an answer wrong. You're not dumb. Um, everybody makes mistakes, even your teachers do. And if there's someone who judges you based on what you put on paper, they're not worth be thinking about anyway. So trust yourself, learn what's happening to your body and figure out ways to handle it when you feel it coming on. No change in the durability of this material, then these numbers could happen just by random chance. That's essentially what we're going to be trying to do using our simulation. So, what I want you to do. I experience math anxiety when I don't know how to do it because generally I like math as a subject because I find that if I know how to do it, it's easy for me. But if I don't know how to do it and it can't be explained to me, I get really stressed out about like not knowing it. I think it has to do with what you don't know. Uh, it, it comes from the unknown of saying, hey, uh, I have this problem I have to solve, but I don't really know the steps to take. And it's one of those things that you have so much, it's so overwhelming that you don't know where to start. And that kind of builds up on itself. Like if you have too much, you don't know where to start, you almost just leave it alone. I think that's uh, where anxiety comes from, of not knowing little pieces that would help you solve something. I don't really enjoy math as much as other classes, so when it comes to doing stuff that's kind of harder, I kind of get anxiety about what it is and the subject in itself. I think it's their own mind. They come into this class thinking like, I'm really bad at math already. And because they keep saying that, or not everyone, but because they keep saying that they don't have an open mind to math, uh, or to a new teacher even, I think that kind of um, it, it gets them stuck to, to say like, I'm going to be anxious and therefore once I see something that I don't understand, I'm not even going to try to understand it. You know, a uh, perfect example, we were doing equations since sixth grade almost. We're doing like just simple equations sixth grade and we were doing exponential equations uh, last week. And eventually you get to a very simple equation of just, you know, 12 is equal to 5x. And how do you get x by itself? And it's almost like no one understood how to get x by itself when it's really just dividing by 5 which you've been doing for, since, since sixth grade. Well, because, you, because some students come in with the idea of exponential equations are so hard and difficult, then that simple equation just becomes foreign anymore. It doesn't look natural anymore. Um, so I think, I think it's a, your own psychic, not being open to it. And I, I believe that. I mean, I, I come into math and I'm like, I'm not open to it either sometimes. And when I think it's too hard for me or too complicated, um, and then I get anxiety, you know, AP statistics, this is my first year teaching it. And the anxiety comes every single unit of, of asking myself, do I understand this enough to teach it to someone else? And, you know, once I read the textbook, once I look online, once I do some problems on my own, then the anxiety goes away. But it's because I went through that whole thing of, okay, Mr. Brand, you, you can't get yourself stuck in your own head because now you have you know, 60 plus students that are relying on you to know the content. Now that may not be the case for a student, but if you think about it, if you approach it in that direction that it's not necessarily the content, but it's actually what you are open to, uh, I think it might open the doors of being anxiety free. When I face math anxiety going into the classroom, it's mainly on tests and quiz days because going into the class, I never really have an issue. It's when I'm tested on the material and to me, Math makes sense in the classroom, but then on the tests, it doesn't make sense. So it's just kind of the dread. And when I look at problems that I don't really understand, a pit just kind of falls in my stomach and it just gets nervous. I honestly think it has to do with uh, somewhere along the lines from uh, kindergarten or you know from being back at home when you were a baby up to the point you get to high school and standardized exams, uh, someone missed some sort of skill. Uh, I was, you know, born and raised in a math world. I did my multiplications table before I went to first grade. Uh, that was my fun game that I played. Um, first grade was, my favorite class was math. We went home and we did uh, the abacus, uh, or is it abacus is what they call it? The thing with the little beads, right? Um, so that was always been part of me and in, in my family and, and, and um, I guess since I was a kid. But that's not always the case. Uh, so, you know, if that's not introduced to you early, and it's introduced to you as a, hey, you need to pass this exam or you need to pass this, this quiz or this topic, I think it kind of alienates some people. So I think it's generated when you're younger versus when you're older. If you ask anyone, uh, why do you hate math? They'll usually associate it with a teacher. They'll never say like, oh, I hate math because it's all about numbers. And That might be the secondary thing, but the first thing might be, 
Well, I had a teacher in second grade that I didn't like. And it was, I think it's all about experiences as opposed to the actual content. What I, what I was trying to figure out was if, if I buried it longer, would it break down more? That's basically what I'm saying. And the way that I engaged it was if, if, the, if it took less. I think the best way to tackle math anxiety is to first understand that being wrong is actually sometimes the best way to learn something cool. Um, you know, some kids just are just impulsive. Some adults too. They impulsively just want to get an answer down on paper so they can move on. Uh, but sometimes the best learning occurs when you're wrong about something. You can ask a good question, then get a great explanation and follow up and kind of see, okay, this is where my understanding broke down. Here's what I did wrong. Here's what I can do to fix it. Uh, so the best strategy I would offer students or adults is to be okay with being wrong, don't freak out, and then learn how to ask for help. I think for some people the best, I, the best option for them is to come to terms with the fact that math is different from other subjects, um, that um, it is typically you are right or you are wrong, but at the same time I don't know many teachers who if you just miss a negative divided by a negative mark your answer completely wrong. And I think for a lot of students, that's a tough obstacle to overcome to understand that it's okay to not be perfect and then you're still mostly right. Um, I think for others, it's it's practice. It's um, putting yourself in situations where you have to do problems um, within a time frame to help you kind of push at the anxiety and, and help yourself understand that you really are capable of doing what's asked in the requested amount of time. Teaching is a profession where we don't see our fruits or you know, the, the end of the, the satisfaction of teaching. We don't see it on a regular basis. But when we do, it, I think it manifests itself as that student who said, I don't understand how I didn't get this a week ago. Why is it that I understand it now, but not, not a week ago? And I think um, what I see in students that overcome anxiety for a specific topic is I see confidence and belief in themselves that hey, I could actually do this. Or like, what was I thinking about a week ago when we started looking at this and I thought it was confusing. Um, so I think that uh, you could just almost see this, this, this sense of pride. Yes, I added fractions. And it's like, you know, it's a silly thing to think about uh, as a whole. But that adding fractions for that one skill, for that one student, was the first step into understanding math to a more complex level. Um, and when I see that, that's when I, I feel like, man, what I'm doing is actually meaningful. Like I'm helping that student understand something that in a sense is getting rid of their anxiety. So I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> it's kind of nice to, to feel like I am, I am helping through the prescription of understanding and, and, and helping them uh, bit by bit and understanding where they're making uh, the mistakes that helps them uh, overcome it, hopefully. So that's my hope, right? I think finding someone who doesn't have math anxiety, partnering, partnering up and really kind of observing what that other person does when he or she is working on problems is a good strategy. Um, working on stress management, in other words, having that friend or that buddy coach you as you do problems with that friend watching, with that friend um, monitoring a clock, telling you how much time you have. Again, the more that you practice in those sorts of situations, the better you become when they count. Um, for a grade in someone's grade book. Uh, think of it like cleaning your room. You, you know, you have a big mess in front of you and you're probably overwhelmed and then there's someone telling you that you have to do it, like your parents are probably telling you, you have to clean. And you don't know where to get started and you really don't want to do it. Um, so I think math anxiety is kind of like that messy room where someone's telling you, you need to pass this class, you need to do really well. Um, so I start by picking something up. And, and if you start with just one thing, do I know my times tables? No, maybe I don't know my times table. If you know your times table, that helps you tremendously. Do I know how to use a calculator? No, I don't. Spend maybe like an hour or two with your math teacher. How can I use my calculator to improve my grade? Uh, or how can I, uh, what topics do I need to study? Fractions. That's picking out that little sock. You know, most people fail at fractions. And uh, if you could just master those little skills that we learned in fifth grade and sixth grade and we never look at them again, it makes the complicated stuff uh, a little bit easier. Uh, you know, it's just piece by piece and, and maybe that room will become clean at some point. I'm one of the odd ones. I do math to overcome anxiety. Um, if I have a lot of issues going on and a lot of problems I'm trying to figure out or my, or my brain is blank as far as what am I going to do to teach today, what new stuff, I will sit down and open up a book and do math problems. Some people think that's weird, but that's how I deal with that anxiety. Um, but in other subject areas like um, humanities, um, the subject that I'm weak in, 
I have to go and put like a whole bunch of stuff in front of me and talk like I'm talking to people. And I talk my way through it to get a better understanding. Or I just ask questions. And my questioning is taking care of the things that I don't know and I feel a little bit more comfortable. So I get that way when I have to talk about history to somebody. Do not ask me about anything. <laughs> you will be very uh, disappointed in my answers. But you know, I do math to take care of the, those anxieties. So to overcome math anxiety, I normally will just ask my friends for help or ask the teacher or go over the review material we've been given in class. Study as hard as I can. I stop wearing shoes. Usually, I just don't think much about it. I think about like the weekend, and that usually cheers me up a little bit. To overcome it, I usually try to study a lot before tests. Um, I look over all material. I actually watch a lot of YouTube videos because I feel like those help. Um, I honestly just study, and I study really hard. That makes me feel more confident in what I'm being tested in. So um, in order to feel better, sometimes I'll get a tutor or I'll meet with my teacher after school and I just kind of have to handle it because it's something that I'm going to have to be um, faced with for a very long time.